That's the golden day of the Wenatchee world. Right. The train rock? Yeah. There was an article on us in the Wenatchee world a couple days ago, but they were like, you know, they quoted me, and it's like one of my best quotes. I, I've had some quotes, but, you know, we, we've been in the Huffington Post, we've been in, you know, we've been in Seattle Times, and some other places, but when the Wenatchee world takes one of your quotes, you know you're big time. But, but what they said, they was like, and I, they quoted me, I said, you know, the way to stay alive as a band is to keep writing new songs. And when Adam texted me that idea, I was like, all right, we can get through this. We're still alive. We're still making it. We're still doing our thing. And I, that was a that was a beautiful moment. So um, that song means a lot, and you know, uh, means a lot to me, and means a lot to Adam. And you know, it's 2023, which means uh, that's the song that we have the most. We got like 100,000 uh, streams on Spotify, which means something. I'm told. Yeah. It means we don't get paid, but people are listening to it. It's the new new school. That's right. Same as it ever was. Yeah, right. Okay. Meet, meet the old boss, same as the new boss. So, all right. This next song is called "Off the Sea Rose," which uh, also during the pandemic we went out to Lake Wenatchee, and I, you know, we stayed up really late, stayed up way too late, and I woke up and I was, I was like, I, I was kind of in rough shape. We'd been drinking a little bit, and I was like, all right, I'm gonna go take a run along the, the road in Lake Wenatchee, and I took it like a two mile run, and I came back all sweaty, and Adam was like on the deck playing something, I was like, what the hell is that, man? That's good. And he had a, like a, a couple lines and a, like, a, like a really killer guitar part and he'd already written half a song. I only, I should go running more often if you're gonna write stuff like this. So. Well, that's what I'm talking about, like in a partnership too. So we've been writing songs together for songs for a long time. And you know, it's, for, it's, like, any, it's like a musical marriage. And sometimes it's frustrating too, but at the same time, he will like, he will remember that. And he'll be like, that's good. I'm like, no, it's not, or whatever. He'll record it or whatever. And a lot, I have a lot of thanks to you for remembering those. He'll be like, remember that thing you're doing? I'm like, no, no. And he'll be like, no, play that. So a lot of it kind of works on like that too. So what I'm saying is like, it's like, and it's probably in a lot of things in life, it's, it's, uh, it's better to do it with somebody else, you know, instead of doing it on your own. Yeah, that's well said, well said. The song's called Off the Sea Rose. Yeah, this is a, actually, I was, think, I was picking on the porch on a beautiful day and I was thinking about my my niece, Rose, who I saw today at breakfast at Schmitty's. So I, I just, I'm not sponsored by Schmitty's, I just thought I'd drop that in. For some reason. <laughs> Product placement. <laughs> Off the Sitting underneath the poplar tree Waiting for the breeze to pick up a seat And it goes Up where nobody knows Watch crowds of people as they pass Sitting here barefoot so I go on sea roads. I don't know where the sound is there. Cause I've been rough in half my life. Can she find a cure for that? Black. So I go on sea roads. I don't know who's at the stairs. Sweet welcome home to the grave. Cause I've been loved in my life. Can she find a cure for that? It's off the sea roads. It's off the sea roads. It's off the 
Appreciate it, folks. Thank you. And I, I just wanted to follow up on something Adam was saying, which is uh, when we're talking about this new record and the, the Wenatchee connection, the name of the album is actually Joe's Meat and Grocery, which yes. is Joe Monda and his uh, meat shop on Ferry Street in Wenatchee. We don't, uh, we don't live in Wenatchee. I actually live in Ballard, and he lives in Queen Anne, and we're, we, we're kind of coasties in that way, you know, West Siders, but 206ers. Sometimes we claim to be from Wenatchee. Uh, yeah, sometimes. All right, when, I'm not, when I'm not claiming to be from White Earth, North Dakota, which is actually where my mom was from before. Okay. It's true. Ready? I'm ready. Don't give up on friends. You can see them now and again. Then you started a fight Pouring gas on your campfire light Sitting here with my folks Let's sneak out, steal their smokes Cause we all know They like you better than me I wanna stick around here Won't you stay away? Sit in your dad's grand marquee Beer cans under the seat No sense in between Lay back, head on the grass Talk to school, having some laughs All day mowing the lawn Big idea and you had some cash Friends will come through in time you will see I want to stick around here Won't you stay awake I want to sit in your dad's grand marquee Beer cans under the seat Nothing in between I started a fight 
Pouring gas on campfire light Give up on your friends. Okay, I do the chorus in that. Don't give up on your friends. Yes. Yeah, we were at the practice space, also located in Ballard. Uh, Adam was toying with this uh, guitar idea and he had this line, don't give up on your friends. And I was like, man, that's a, that's a good title. And uh, so I started, I started thinking about my misspent youth in Marysville, Washington. <laughs> don't judge. I felt judgment when I said you Marysville. Still, still like working through that? Yeah, yeah, I got a therapist. But uh, no, uh, I had a friend of mine, Rob Wicks. And uh, Rob Wicks, it was like his mom, uh, Prevalent in several songs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This guy, he's my best friend from like fourth grade to like 11th grade when we kind of had a falling out. But uh, his mom, another friend of ours and me, uh, we were convinced our, our kind of running joke, which is actually really sad, was like, you know, yeah, man, Rob, your, your mom likes me and my buddy Levi more than you. And, you know, it's like a really like a, you know, and he was like, you know, oh, you know, screw you guys or whatever. But it was like, so I try to write a song from his perspective, you know, and, and like that's something that's a beautiful thing in songwriting is like, I try to get into the mind of me and my buddy Rob Wicks at the age of 16 where you just, you just don't know a lot, you haven't lived a lot, you haven't had a lot but of context, you know. but you think you know a lot. So it's like, the lines in that song is like, I'm sitting here with my folks, let's sneak out, steal their smokes, cause we all know they like you better than me. <laughs> It's like, what a 16-year-old thing to sing. So, like, that entire song is, like, full of, like, like lines like a 16-year-old might mom's say. Not here. Yeah, well, yeah, I know. My, my mom's been trying to kick a smoking habit for, like, you know, 55 years. So, you know, I, I, I want to I I give her some love on that, trying to, you know, she's trying to do her thing. And this is more of, like... Taking all those stories, all those stories I had from Marysville and kind of putting them in my mind as a 16-year-old. And I love that about songwriting is like you're know, putting yourself in a, you know, in the shoes of somebody else, in the shoes of you possibly when you were younger. And that's a, you know, that's a, it's a liberty you can take that I think is kind of beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll take that to, um, Ethan's an awesome storyteller too. I like, I can write cinematic and sometimes I write words that just like I'll say, or I go to the practice room early and I kind of come up with some music. To, I try to come up with something new every practice, show up early, which we were talking earlier that, to be honest with you, doing this long enough, showing up, you gotta have some talent, you gotta work at it, but you gotta show up. And that's what half the thing is, because it's hard being a musician, it's hard to play all those do that and have a day job and do all that kind of stuff, but you do it because you love it. But the trick is to just keep doing it, and then you get better and better, too. But um, he's a great storyteller that can tap into all these old stories. If you listen to our albums, there's, there's a lot of like uh, templates of songs that we kind of do, too. So he's a master storyteller, historical. Uh, so he can set his own, uh, like a mini Bruce Springsteen over here, too. A lot of times I'm writing, so there'll be a song like, because I let him take care of the words most of the time, too. And sometimes I'll have a song and I'll be like, I'm not explaining it well enough to, to him. Because I had a weird idea for this song, which took some selling to do. Because it's like, you know, you could talk about Rob Wicks. Or you could talk about a murder. So, but I was kind of like taking this song, like, you know, bear with me. Bear with me. But you're talking about perspectives. So, sure, that's right. We were playing in England, in the north of England. If anyone's been there, there could be some kind of rough, really industrial areas. And we're often as musicians out late and loading gear and stuff too. And it was just, just happened to be one night we were out in a, um, it was Middlesbrough, which is by Newcastle, Newcastle on Tyne. Yeah, yeah, Newcastle River. Anyway, 
So we're there, and this doesn't happen often, so mom, don't worry. But anyway, these guys, it was kind of closing time at the bars, and that can be dicey sometimes. So these, these, these menacing youths came up. We're loading up the van. We have all our gear in there. And they're like, what's in the van? And we're like, not going to tell them what's in the van, because all of our gears and guitars are in there, too. But they were clearly not in their right minds and probably had some bad substances. And it was a, a situation where they kept on pushing and pushing. And I was like, gosh, you know what? I'm a lover, not a fighter. Everybody knows that, right? Right, right. Yeah. Everyone here yeah. knows. But anyway, so what happened is it got to be the point where it could have gone to that next level. And I do what I do best is I can kind of bend Kenobi, Obi-Wan Kenobi out of the situation and end up working out fine. But I was thinking about that later that night, and I was like, what if there was a fight? Or what if somebody got hit? Or what if somebody hit the ground, cracked their head, died? Or whatever, or and then in a band, and then one of one of us went back after revenge. I was thinking like maybe like I could get a Netflix deal or something. Right, right, right. I didn't, but I was able to write a song about it. So this is this is a song about what could have happened. What could have happened when you and Fred almost killed a man in Newcastle on time. Right. Almost yeah. killed. A we man. didn't though. You can't prove it. Right. 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 But anyway, yeah, so this is just kind of like you're talking about perspectives playing about it. But I was like thinking about, it. you're over there in that dark part of England, and it's so, it's like got a feeling to it, so you know what I mean? And it's like, I was like, we gotta write a song about that. This is kind of a dark one. Walk a pack of lies I know you don't remember Newcastle on time Sins of a dirty river And I know you're flat But I'll be coming back Vengeance is a curse But that's a game you chose And you made it work Now you're caught in the backspin Been there most of your life Now you're caught in the backspin And you don't think twice There was blood in the street Through the mist and the light Start the sound of a blow And I'll come back on you If it takes all I know Now you're caught in the backspin Been there most of your life Now you're caught in the backspin and you don't think twice Spilling blood in the fight And you don't think twice Walk a pack of lies I don't think you'll be remembered Even if I'm broken You're floating in the river now you're caught in the backspin Been there most of your life Now you're caught in the backspin And you don't think twice, no You don't think twice Twice You don't think twice Come on down, guitar, everybody. Just a little quick. Getting near Armor Road. 
and the night was black as soot. These town toughs started tailing our blue Ford tempo, flashing lights. Didn't know how many were inside. Tom looked at me and said, pull over, let's take these guys. Driver's seat, I was driving. I said I was driving. Mama's in the backseat. Mama's in the backseat, county line. Mama's in the backseat. Mama's in the backseat, county line. We're pulled over by the ditch. This dude in the backwards cap came up on us so quick. Man, I barely got a look. Before we knew it, he punched Tom in the face through the open passenger side window and said, tell everyone Danny Iverson's back in town. Yeah. But he ain't taking no. Tom slowly rolled up his window. We never made it out of the car. He never made it out. Mama's in the backseat. Mama's in the backseat, county line. Mama's in the backseat. Mama's in the backseat, county line. Mama said to be careful. Mama said to listen well. Mama said, I'm not just in your world. She said, son, you are my one and only man. She said, make peace and I'll put the rifle down. Made it home. Mom's still waiting up, always waiting up. Light on, book in hand, smoking from a pack of merits. I told her about the fight, but all I wanted to do was wrap myself in my old Star Wars blanket, go to sleep in my bed. That's it. Mama's in the backseat. Mama's in the backseat, county line. Mama's in the backseat. Mama's in the backseat, county line. Mama said to be careful. Mama said listen well. Mama said I'm not just anyone. She said son, you are my one and only now. She said use your words, your testimony. Live to tell another story Make peace and now put the rifle down Hey! Mama's in the backseat Mama's in the backseat back County line Mama's in the backseat Mama's in the backseat back County line Oh You got me at the Star Wars when I get around, man Also my brother Mike's here who took me to see Star Wars in 1977. Yeah, the UA-150, no longer there. Where was that at? Yeah. Oh, that's very, yeah, that's very nice. We got, we got two more songs. Are we feeling all right about that? All right, well, um, 
Where do we go from there, man? This, is the, this next song is seriously the only song ever written in the history of mankind that mentions Sisyphus, Lord of the Flies, and the Kingdom. <laughs> Who's been in the Kingdom out there? Okay. Ken Griffey hit a million home runs. Those are the days. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Why'd I you dream about making it? Riding on the speed, you're just making it. Lost in my old world, you know. Riding in my own way. Don't want my love out there and making it. Yeah. Burning that candle, just making it. Sacrifice my soul and body now. So nobody forgives my name. I can nearly tell the truth Cause falling is all I can do Taste of fame, reputation, not making it Boulder up the hill, just making it I'm afraid of falling walls, you know We're getting to the end of the day Don't win that on Dollar with making it. I'm spending all my money just making it. Journey like a freedom fighter now. Ready for my peaceful day. Cause it's harder than the iron side, you know. To come through. Stony from above if you rise, you know. Falling from Shot again. Chase the light, that's what they did. Bring back the fight I left alone. Bring back the kingdom. Bring back the nights I spent alone. Call the seas, fire I made. So I can make a peace, just making it. Hurry like a freedom fighter now. Ready for my peaceful days. Cause it's hard to let your pity and pride go. To cut through, stony from above your eyes, you know. I can nearly tell the Thank you, folks. I want to say a big thank you to Dennis yes. and Steve for putting this series on. Give those guys a round of applause. <laughs> Kelly and Chris, everybody else on this bill tonight, give those guys a round of applause as well. Thank you so much. It's an honor to be on this. We don't get to do this kind of thing all that often. Um, so, uh, yeah. Um, I just want to say, like, this, is, this actually meant a lot to me because we don't get a chance to do this. We were on a TV show in, on King 5 called Band in Seattle. You can see it on a very late night, you know. It's not at, like, 5 o'clock. It's at, like, midnight on Saturday night. But if you do watch the reruns, you'll see our episode every once in a while. And that's the first time people started asking us. That's the first time anybody, I feel like, has sat down and, like, kind of asked us questions. Like, you know, how do you write? When did the band form? All this kind of stuff. That's really confusing. Yeah, well, no, so many questions. Why are you asking me these questions? Let me put it back on you. No, it was 
Awesome. But uh, this is kind of reminiscent of that. Like, you know, you don't, it's like the, you know, what we call it, like metacognition, you know, thinking about thinking. Like, how do you think about how you write? And uh, there's a really killer book out called The Power of Two. And in The Power of Two, that book, they talk a lot about, um, you know, the famous duos, you know, Lennon, McCartney, uh, Anderson, Monda. Anderson, Monda, obviously. Yeah, obviously. Uh, Klaus Kinski and. Yeah, Warner Herzog. And just the uh, tension that goes into like two people working together on art is often it's sort of like a tenuous relationship. So um, I want to give a lot of, a lot of love to Adam and for dealing with me most of the time. And uh, you know, any band, there's a certain kind of chemistry and we've, we've, we've kind of fine tuned that a bit and had some really, really great adventures. And um, so it means a lot. Thank you guys for having us, and it, it's nice to be able to kind of stretch out and play these songs and not, you know, uh, have to um, feel like, you know, we're 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 um, we're like, you know, under the microscope to like, hey, all right, you got to we're gonna get to talk too much. Yeah, this is where we don't we don't talk all that much at gigs. I, I don't think we do. It's more it's mostly bang bang bang. Yeah. It's nice to kind of unpack a little bit. This this is. A Another one we kind of dust off. We got a lot of records, and it's like, gosh, we got to listen to these old ones and then dust some new ones off and get rid of some other ones. But this was kind of a fun one that I showed up at practice early, and I kind of wrote this kind of sinister sounding thing. I don't know why I'm getting so sinister these days. But um, often this will happen too. That's what I'm talking about the, the partnership. Sometimes I could take, I could write a lot of half and quarter songs, a lot of those. But like, so I came up with this song, and the only thing I had, I was just sitting there, I was like, sometimes I could. Come off the melody or something in the hand, or here's what I'm thinking. Or sometimes I can channel that's I can channel something that'll come into my head. And it was like I only thing I had for this, I had the music, and then there's a lot of people saying you were there. And that's a sinister, like, that's a sinister well, line. Like, but anyway, I've been able to take that and then Ethan will be able to come and be like, oh what's that? I'll be like there's a lot of people saying you were there, and he'll be like, then he'll take and write a whole like this song. Um, it's called saying you were there. It's called so I got the title, so I get you know credit. It's all the money you roll. Yeah, get, get, who's getting all the money on this one? <laughs> but uh, <laughs> he's got he wrote all the words except for there's a lot of people just saying you were there. And I happened to be at the time reading a lot of Raymond Carver, Cormac McCarthy, Dennis Johnson, Willie Flotten, which are like some yeah, very really, dark, really up it, really yeah. like positive stuff. Yeah, you're yeah. the negative one. Yeah. What's the most What's the most depressing novel you ever read? And tell me it's not The Road. Woo! Yeah, no uh, old man. Yeah, I mean, so, but I find, honestly, and this is the last thing I'll say, it's our last song, whatever, but I find a lot of comfort in these, like, apocalyptic stories. I'm serious, because the last three years have been apocalyptic. There's a show called The Last of Us that's on HBO right now. And it's like, it's an incredible show. But it's very satisfying in a way, because I'm like, well, at least it's not as bad as those guys have. You know? <laughs> I don't think it could be a movie just like our Baxman murder story. This is like, you know, this is like the shady part of SeaTac. There's some lights going on. So you could kind of make up your own. I was kind of envisioning like a kind of North told, Portland. I kind of wanted to ask you what this is. I'm not afraid to ask you. For fear of, you know, you criminating. <laughs> Be honest with you, this is the last thing I'll say and then we'll play this. But and, and I, I like we were told no scissor kicks. But at the end of this I might scissor kick just to, like just for emphasis. Uh, but we we had a gig out at some winery in the Tri-Cities and the winery was like, and we'll put you up in a hotel in a hotel. I'm thinking a winery, super bougie, that'll be great. But they put us up in a Motel 6 on the wrong side of the Tri-Cities. Whichever Tri-City is the least of the Tri. They put us there, and in that Tri-City... Yeah, there was the one that probably was going to be the Quad Cities. <laughs> and then was the tri -Cities. Like, no, unless that one is not, that's not in the Tri-Cities. But we, there were people living in this motel, and I just, you know, and I thought to myself, I was like, you know, reading these books, I'm like, you know, put myself in the perspective of somebody that's like living in a motel. You put yourself in the perspective, because you were So bad. I blame the winery personally, but uh, anyway, the point is, is like, you know, you're in these perspectives and these, you know, these, these folks, it's like, what happens if, let's say, what happens if they wanted to do the right thing? 
but they never had a model, right? What happens if they never had a model of how to do the right thing? Let's say maybe they did something bad, but they didn't know how to deal with it. And like I try to extrapolate from this. Try to say like the kid on the bike. We got so many stories. I'm not even gonna get into that whole that whole thing. It's called saying you were there. It's on our penultimate record, Great Divides. This is all part of the ambiance. I want to say a big thank you to my sons Damien and Anton, who will be selling merchandise at the after the show. And I'm going to cut them in on a certain percentage. So if you like to like support kids in the summer on a lemonade stand or Girl Scout cookies, it's kind of the same thing, except with our albums and T-shirts and trucker hats. Standing on this one, Adam. There's a lot of people saying you were there Coming completely unaware There's a lot of rubbernecking at the scene Hell a lot of talking on the screen We need story news I witness testimony, police lights under no moon, and your path is closing. Uh. It's cold out there and nobody cares. Should never let you on the thoroughfare. Saw you crack tail lights fade. On to another crusade. Not gonna read you your last rise. Flashing TV lights from your dark motel. That excuse you always use Passengers on the left Makes no difference where you slept Or where you been mm -hmm. Passengers on the left Passengers on the left Silence and the sirens dissipate You were never willing to be afraid Ambulances, network trucks Should have known better pushing your love Evening story news I witness testimony, police lights under no moon, and your path is closing. Passengers on the left, you'll be paying out your debt for where you've been. Passengers on the left
go. Thank you, folks. We'll see you out in the merch booth. Thanks for sticking around. Appreciate Thanks you. So Thank you. Massey Ferguson, we'll see you in Seattle at the legendary Triple Door Theater on Friday, June 2nd, if not before. Thank you. <laughs>